Hi there, this is Julie Tornquist with Welcome Home Mindy and Parkbench.com and I am here today with Justin Walsh, a good friend of mine and a local Indianapolis artist. Hey Justin. Hello Julie, how are you? I'm doing well today, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Great. Um, we're sitting in Justin's living room um, and this is one of his paintings. I fell in love with it the first time I saw it because I could see all of my grandsons with superhero capes. Of jumping course. and playing. Um, who's in the picture? So this is actually um, two of my uncles. Okay. Uh, a couple years ago, my, I come from a big uh, Irish Catholic family, so I've got like nine aunts and uncles, and they had me scan in about 4,000 slides. Uh. And they were all old school slides that my grandpa had taken, so this was one of the ones that I just loved. And it's, yeah, this is my, uh, my, uncle, my uncle Dan. Who's the kid over here? No idea. <laughs> no idea. The neighbor just, kid that the, just the, wants the to be part kid, of the fun. Yes, this is Indiana Dunes, and I was like, all right, I gotta print it. And then um, I printed it originally for a different project, and then looked at it long enough where I was like, I gotta draw on that. Yeah. It's important for me yeah. to do something with it. So yeah, that, that's what you're looking at. Old school slides. That is cool. So you drew on the slide. No, I so, actually drew on the print. So you made the print, drew on the print. You got okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So. Tell me, because I've seen your stuff and I've seen you do a lot of different things. What kind of medium do you work in? So I'm I'm trained in photography, uh -huh. um, but even in my undergrad, um, I started to branch out a little bit um, and do things that were of photography, but also installation, mixed media, video, okay. projection. Primarily, I'm a photographic and image-based artist. So originally, drawing on photos started with a, a, a from in a different place than this. Yeah. It started um, <clears throat> with my investigation, and this was most of undergrad, and then bled over into grad school. Was this like hunt for the middle ground between the organic and the synthetic? So okay. nature versus man-made. Those things I was trying to like find to make make them come together and like yeah. relieve the tension in there. Yeah. And so I started to do that by um, taking flower photos, which that's kind of what I love to do. Is mm -hmm. uh, flowers are what I take pictures of, just naturally. Um, and I started to, I actually started to measure them out. So I would take a ruler and a compass and be like, the stem is this long, the petals are this long, the, the distance between the two is this, but I realized about halfway through that, I hate math. <laughs> so you weren't into the Fibonacci sequence? No, and I, and I, am, I love that stuff. I think it's really fascinating, but that, that wasn't turning me on as much as just mark making over the photograph. And I had this just amazing moment where I was sitting there um, making these geometric marks, and it was incredibly meditative. Yeah. So I was sort of transported back to the moment in which I took the photograph. Okay. Which was fascinating for me. It was like a chance to relive that beautiful moment that I captured that rose in the sunshine. Sure. And I mean, the minute you capture a photograph, it starts to, uh, in a kind of a sad way, it starts to die. Yeah. Um, the yeah. memory, you can never go back to that place. And I found myself like... You kind of long for it. You do. Yeah. And that's that's the uh, brilliance of drawing on these photos. It became a, like a time capsule back. Yeah. Um, and so I would do just geometric mark making on Sharpie on inkjet prints. Okay. Um, once I got used to not making prints precious, yeah. this sort of thing. Then you can do on you yeah, can do anything with it. Then you can do anything. Um, I'm coming off of a little bit of uh, a binge investigation into masculinity, though. Uh -huh. That was my primary driver in graduate school, yeah. um, which I just graduated two years ago. So yeah. that, that was my like heavy movement. Oh, wow. Um, so I got into so what, what did you learn in that that surprised you? <clears throat> That's a great question. Um, I think the two biggest things I learned in that investigation is one, I don't necessarily need to make the art. I need to recognize it in the universe. Okay. Picking it out as that's artwork. Sure. It was this pivotal moment because I thought I had to make everything I you know, produced, like that was, that was the, that was the art. That's where the art came uh -huh. and it's not. Um, and that happened when one of my mentors came into my studio and he saw a bunch of my old posters from my room laying on the ground, like John Belushi with the college t-shirt and like yes. Ninja Turtles. And I had them flattening because I wanted to do something with them. And I had them flattening with philosophy books, like these big heavy tomes. And he walked in and he's looking at all these things I'm trying to do and force my way into and he's like, there's your art. There it is. And I, I went, you son of a bitch. 
Oh. When you said that, my head's like, yeah. I know, right? And it was this this very free. Man. That might have been the biggest reason to come to grad school. It's about that the, one moment. That one moment where yeah. it's it's not necessarily about the makership. The makership starts with the intention, uh -huh. the recognition, the counterpoint within the universe that is the art, um, and it has opened me up so much to to being a more mature artist. Oh, that is so cool. And then the second thing I think that was the big lesson for me is that the tension mm -hmm. is the stuff that you want. So for me- That's where you, emotion is. Yeah. That's where yeah. emotion sits. So trying to um, you know, drain all the water out of the, the tension between synthetic and organic, like, yeah. that's not the point. Um, I, uh, uh, artist Wayne White, who uh -huh. used to, uh, he, he's responsible for the um, PV Herman show. Okay. Actually, yeah, he does all that. He's a, he, yeah, we had the <laughs> great gift of having him come to Heron and he did a studio visit with me. Oh, like, he came wow. into my studio and saw the Geo Flowers and heard me talk about trying to stitch together this rift between synthetic and organic uh -huh. and traditional masculine and, and actual masculine. And he's like, dude. That's that's where the that's the rich creamy center. Don't get rid of that. Yeah. Don't try to stitch it. Like that tension is the most interesting part of the artwork. So I think for me, a lot of it is like letting go and living there, mm -hmm. and letting that open me up rather than trying to force it. Yeah. So. And once you recognize, that's where it. I mean, that's where life happens. Life happens in the tension. It does. Yeah. That's where the richness is. But we never talk about that. Do we? We dance around it. We do dance around it, and I, I think maybe that's uh, a reaction to the discomfort um, in that tension, because that tension is not necessarily stable, um, but there's great beauty in it. Oh, you can yeah. learn to kind of be a leaf in the wind, or be the water just kind of cruising. There's yeah. there's an ability to float with that tension. Yeah. Um, I love that. Yeah. Right now, I am trying really hard to figure out what comes next in terms of the investigation into contemporary masculinity. Mm -hmm. I'm just try I'm asking myself, have I put that to bed? Yeah. Um, is that is that done, or well, do I still need to make art about it? That's a timely topic. Yeah, it is. It really yeah, is. yeah, it really is. I think that's one of the most fascinating things for me. Is like I've learned that part of my mission is to in in part what masculinity means to me to show other um, men and becoming men, so adolescents into yeah. adult men, that it is okay to be um, you know, a, a straight male who feels feelings or a, a man who's in touch with the vulnerability because that's where the strength lies, um, mm -hmm. to kind of break down some of those toxic um, characteristics that form masculinity because yeah. masculinity without the, the feminine portions that we consider is just it's very one dimensional it's brittle and it, yeah. it's brittle um, and i think it's that one dimensional um, image that one dimensional reality that so many men live with yeah. and live unfulfilled and and that's because they're missing half of themselves they're missing half of themselves um, and, and so i don't know i, I have my hunch is that there's more investigation to be done. Um, it's just, it's funny, coming out of the crucible of grad school, like, it's so intense. Um, so much of my thesis in, in graduate school was about, like, contemporary masculinity and turning the microscope back in on myself, making videos about that work, uh -huh. um, making videos about my vulnerability, that I'm like, Whew, maybe I need to take a, a minute and, uh, walk away from it for yeah. a second and then see what comes after. Um, so that, that that's, I'm trying to figure out what's left there to investigate. I yeah. imagine there will be, but yeah. I did a kind of a full circle back to what I enjoy doing, which was mark making on photographs. So for right yeah. now, that's, it's almost like being in meditation and mindfulness practice and you come back to the breath. Okay. Do you know that's what I mean? a great, yeah. So yeah, me making images that I consider beautiful and marking on them or using my hands on them in some way yeah. is me returning to the breath. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, that, that's where the, yeah. um, and I'm okay with that right now. Sure. So, well that's, you know, you do what is now. You just you be do what, is, what now. is now. Yeah. One of my uh, mentors, <coughs> Linda Adele Goodeye, who is the 
director of the photography program at Heron for many years. I remember her saying in my studio, um, she'd keep asking me, Justin, is this still play? Are you still playing? And it, so much so that I wrote it on my wall, like, is this still play, like in yeah. Sharpie. Um, and that's right now when I'm using my studio time, that's what's in the back of my head. Like, am I trying to commodify every little thing? Am mm -hmm. I trying to let um, sales of my artwork like be the guy? Of course I want to sell it. It totally jazzes me. It's like, right. like somebody else loves my art. Yeah, Yay. direct mainline affirmation. That's you know? right. It's fantastic. <laughs> but at the same time, like that's it has to still be play. Yeah. It has to still be fulfilling. Um, and I think that's where I can truly make my way through some problems. Mm -hmm. That's where the stuff shakes out. Yeah. That's where the good fruit is. I think that if, as an artist though, if you're having fun with it, if you're playing with it, it's got to come out in your art. It does. I yeah. mean, I, I just would think it add, it would add a whole other level of energy to your art. The think, joy shows up. It does, it, the joy shows up. And I think um, for me and, and perhaps other artists or makers like me, that the danger is, um, using that, that heavy thinking process. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a black background in philosophy, so it's always up here. Yeah. The joy lives right here. And so for me, it's a lot of times tough to get out of my head and into my heart. When those two combine, that's when the authenticity shows up in the work. That's when I make poignant work. Um, rather than drafting out an idea and saying, Ooh, this would be cool, and this would be cool, and then making an equation for it, like this, this equals art. Yeah. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, yeah. but the play, I need to be able to finger paint and make a mess. Yeah. 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 So. So if somebody wanted to um, have you do something cool for them, um, whether it's photography or marking on a picture they already have or whatever, yeah. how do they get in touch with you? So um, my website, jtwalshstudios.com, mm -hmm. um, there's a link to um, my email through that. That's the best way to get a hold of me. Um, okay. That has some of my current work. It also has some of the commercial stuff on it because it's been on. Yeah. Um, Instagram, my personal Instagram, uh, Justin T. Walsh. Okay. Um, is another avenue, um, and then direct message is usually the yeah. best, most effective method to get a hold of me. And they can also call me. I know and how to they get can call you. Right. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, you gotta put your hat on. Uh huh. So this is Julie Turnquist signing off with Welcome Home Indie at Parkbench.com. Thank you so much. Oh.